This is the second in a series that I am creating called The Cemetery Chronicles based on the historic cemetery that is behind my home. Uh, there are several graves there marked with merely the letters of the person who is deceased and so I thought I would pay them homage by writing little odes to them. Totally fictitious, but uh, the first one was Who Was JB? This one is called Who Was AC? AC was short for Alfred Cunningham. One of the earliest settlers in Thornhill, Alfred was a bit of a loner who never married and died at the ripe old age of 64. Having lived most of his life apart from the community and the cabin he built, not far from the road that he was helping construct. Like most of the people of his day, Alfred never worried about what tomorrow would bring. He rose at dawn, dressed and ate what was available, and went forth to join the others who were gathering to begin their day's work. Some days were better than others, depending on the weather, the length of the day, and the demands made on him by the sometimes ornery military engineers, but Alfred never complained and was generally of good disposition and well-liked by his peers. AC did not have many close friends. A loner by nature, he found the best company was to be encountered in the nature that surrounded him. He was often happiest when watching the sunset from the vast expanse of land that was then the starlit, populated, sparsely populated village of Thorns Mills, as it was known in the day. Today it's called Thornhill. Animals seemed at ease around A.C., people less so, for A.C. had this uncanny sense about him that made people uncomfortable in his presence. He was prone to visions of the future, you see, and no one knew quite how to react to these ramblings, which usually occurred after he'd had a drink or two, right before the village was closing down for the night and getting ready for bed. A common thread in A.C.'s ramblings was his foretelling of an era to come, where the citizenry would be beholden to those in positions of power, unappreciative of their good fortune to find themselves in such a beautiful piece of God's earth, and even worse, actively seeking to destroy all that A.C. and others were working so hard to create. A.C. also predicted that a plague would befall the earth, but not in the sense that one would usually ascribe to this kind of illness and resultant loss of life. No, A.C. prophesied the second fall of the Roman Empire, although he claimed that this would be known in the centuries to come as the fall of the Western world. In this destructive scenario, A.C. described what he referred to as the unleashed forces of evil. Sometimes he called them escaped demons from the bowels of the earth that would band together to bend goodwill to their evil purposes with the express plan to fell God's original desire to bring forth his good work in the form of a man and a woman, which he had created for the betterment of the planet and the human race. One morning, AC failed to show up for the day's work. By lunchtime, there was a concern among his fellow workers that something was amiss, as AC had never missed a day, no matter the weather or his general health, and a small group was dispatched to check on the situation. The group that came across AC were indelibly marked for life when they came to his humble abode at the edge of town. They were never able to talk about what they saw and took this story with them to the grave. Today, courtesy of A.C., I offer it to you in his stead. A.C. lay stretched out on his bed, beside him his trusty dog, waiting for his master who would never awaken. On his chest was a book which lay open to a page which read, I layeth before you a prophet, whom you may disregard at your peril. Take heed, O ye of little faith. Mankind is but an experiment, which, if it fails, will vanish, like the temporal prophet, whom I have gifted you as a warning. And with that, both A.C. and his faithful dog ascended from the bed as if propelled on a carpet of air and vanished before their eyes into the cloudless sky above. That night, there was a display of falling stars, which the villagers either missed entirely because they were fast asleep in their beds, or watched in awe as the heavens lit the skies with their brilliant spectacle. The next morning brought everyone to the holy grounds of Trinity Church, where a headstone was laid to mark the life of one A.C., 
a man ahead of his time, but also the eyes of the future for the rest of us.